Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Team 4250 The Lightsabers. In this video, I will be teaching you what strafing is and how to use it. I will be going over what you will need for strafing, how strafing works, and the programming you will use to make your robot strafe. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Here is the first thing to discuss. What is strafing? Strafing is a sideways movement of your robot that does not require turning. It is useful in autonomous for quicker actions, and it is useful in teleop for less driver inputs and more control. Strafing is incredibly useful, especially in this year's game at the time of recording, which is Freight Frenzy for FTC. Strafing allows you to get through those 13-inch gaps between the barriers and both field walls much easier. So it is useful in multiple ways, and because it doesn't require turning, it can be much more accurate. The second thing to discuss is what you will need for strafing. The first thing is a square or almost square base, and the second thing is well-distributed weight across the robot. This is because we don't want to put more pressure on one wheel than we do on another, because that will cause the robot to turn as it strafes. If everything is the same in our strafing, then it is less likely to turn while it strafes or become inaccurate with its distance. Part of this is also going to be having the same motors for all wheels. You can use any type of motors. I personally prefer the Go Builder motors. And then the last thing is you are going to, of course, want Mechanum wheels. Mechanum wheels are the wheels you use for strafing. They've got rollers on the wheels, and that is what allows it to have that strafing movement. Again, I prefer Go Builder. However, you, you can use any Mechanum wheels you can find. The next thing to talk about is how does strafing work? Now, these red arrows are going to symbolize the direction that the motors are moving in. As you can see, these two motors on the right side are going in towards each other. So this front one is going backwards, this back one is going forwards. So they are pushing in towards each other and providing opposite forces. On the left side, this front motor is going forwards, so it is pushing out, and this back one is going backwards, so it is pushing out as well. So what this does is th this provides opposite forces on each side of the robot, which means that the wheels are pushing in towards each other, and there's only one way left for them to go, which is sideways. So force is put into these rollers, which causes the robot to move sideways instead of moving forwards or backwards. And the final thing to talk about is programming. So as you can see on our program, we have the front left motor is set to forward power, the front right motor is set to backwards power, the back left motor is set to backwards power, and the back right motor is set to forwards power. This is the same as what we have in this robot image here. The front left motor is going forwards, the back left motor is going backwards, the front right motor is going backwards, and the back right motor is going forwards. This is going to cause the robot to strafe right because the motors on the right side of the robot are pushing in towards each other. If you wanted the robot to go left, you would want the left motors to push into each other, and so you would just change these negative signs around so that instead of being on the front right and the back left motor, they were instead on the front left motor and the back right motor. I hope this video has been an informative learning experience for many of you. That way, you can now begin to use strafing for your FTC robots. I hope to see more teams using strafing in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so you will be updated when a new video comes out. Again, thank you for watching, and may the force be with you.